Mira is a, uh, is a specialist in stochastic particle algorithm, discretization of stochastic differential equation, and uh, analysis of uh, uh, partial differential equation and SD. So Mireille Bossi has more than uh, 50 publications in top uh, journals in the field of stochastic and computational methods, like Annals of Polity, Annals of Private Polity, Mathematics of Compilation, Bernoulli, and so on and so on, and so many uh, uh, top journals. She has coordinated many uh, funded projects related to ener energy production and car carbon emission issues. And recently, she started a, a new INRIA team on a team of stochastic modeling in complex fluid mechanics. And the, the research project is called Callisto. This is an ambitious research program, which contributes to major issues such as the management of pollutants by fun, fine particles in our environment. So today we are more than happy to have her uh, with us to give, I'm sure, an exciting talk about some numerical aspects of SD's modeling particle dynamics in turbulent flow. So you're right, the floor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emmanuel, for this uh, very nice uh, introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, to, to thank the organizers of uh, this uh, MCM 2021 uh, conference and for the opportunity for me to, to give this talk. Also virtually, it's a great pleasure for me to, to participate to this, uh, to this event. So um, uh, my talk um, will focus on simulation uh, techniques uh, for SDE. Is the is modeling uh, dynamics of uh, small entities uh, that I call particles in a bath of uh, turbulent flow. So although this uh, modeling issues and numerical uh, uh, techniques uh, looks uh, quite specific, uh, the SD involved and uh, uh, simulation uh, and particular uh, question of uh, um, boundary issue, boundary simu SD with boundary uh, simulation issue, or of SDs with stiff uh, drift uh, drift term, is rather generic, and I hope uh, you uh, to continue to convince you uh, on that point uh, at the end of my of my presentation. So to motivate a bit uh, this discussion, um, I would like uh, to give you some. Um, um, uh, introduction uh, pictures, uh, modeling the motion of the dust or pollen is uh, it's a quite old problem, uh, partially uh, solved uh, by the Brownian motion and Langevin dynamics for plus solid mechanics, of course, but um, very complex uh, situation arise uh, quickly, uh, as soon as uh, turbulent uh, and uh, the, 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 the flow, uh, the phase flow, the air, the water that carries the particle is in motion itself, and uh, moreover, when it is motion, it's turbulent. Um, so uh, here, a few examples of uh, such kind of uh, situation, mainly uh, with. Uh, environmental situation, but uh, many of uh, industrial situation as well, such like uh, complex material industry, um, uh, uh, arise uh, with such uh, complex uh, simulation. Um, in any case, complexity arise also with uh, the interaction of these particles with uh, boundaries, typically obstacles. So it can lead to deposition problems, it could lead to resuspension of particles in the atmosphere. It could also um, uh, arise on complexity coming from interaction with other particles. So uh, it produces heterogeneity because uh, collision between uh, these particles produce some aggregations events, and these aggregation events produce heterogeneity of size, uh, of densities, of form, of shape as well. So all of this uh, uh, complexity could be uh, translated in uh, stochastic modeling, and this is 
uh, apart uh, uh, some points, uh, some, uh, um, let's say, um, main motivation of the panel of my talk. So the first part will be uh, a quick tour of the modeling the, of the stochastic Lagrangian approach uh, in a turbulent flow. Then I will move in a specific problem of uh, how to uh, model and uh, simulate some Langevin type dynamic uh, and doing some uh, specular reflection. So this is uh, typically motivated by the uh, occurrence in the simulation of collision event. So I will discuss some weak convergence uh, results uh, for some numerical scheme. And uh, also I will uh, uh, mention some uh, um, auxiliary convergence results for the other uh, reflected uh, uh, problem leading to a, to a diffusion, a brilliant diffusion uh, SDS. And finally, uh, as an illustration of what's going on in uh, such a domain, I would like to um, um, give some uh, more empirical uh, results on the modeling of non-spherical particles. So typically, uh, we, uh, um, we deal in the first part of that talk with spherical uh, particles. And um, the introduction of some uh, shape uh, quickly uh, as the question of how to model the orientation of that, uh, of that particle and the interaction and bond interaction with particles among them and with countries again. Okay, so um, before to, uh, to go uh, to enter with the, the equations, I would like to uh, uh, have give some recall of what is going on with this uh, turbulence modeling and particle dynamics. So we face uh, uh, two, uh, two entities. One is the complexity of the turbulence. And here uh, it's a domain of fundamental physics that, that work at uh, a deeper understanding of the force uh, at play in particular, if we want to address some uh, two-way coupling effects. But also it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's a way from fundamental physics to engineering to uh, have a, a co-description from microscale to, to mi microscale, sorry, for, to microscale, a co-description and a coherent description of, uh, of, the, of the models for the phase and for the particles and a co-numerical simulation uh, also that uh, have to address not just uh, fully resolved scale. So this is a, the picture here of a complex turbulence in, the, in this left part, but also uh, to be compatible with the scale of the engineering problem, uh, which are far from the, 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 the fully resolved uh, uh, problem. So in fact, we have to mix this uh, complexity of turbulence flow with the classical uh, mechanics of solids that are collide, uh, uh, the small balls are collide uh, with each other and with the boundary. Uh, I would like also to recall that uh, nowadays uh, the opening issue in terms of modeling of such a problem is going on the terrain of, uh, of uh, non-spherical particles. So typically here is a bath of small uh, roads in uh, isotropic turbulent uh, flow. Uh, and here, typically, it's, uh, it's swimmers, uh, so some uh, um, flexible fibers in bars of uh, 3D uh, channel flow. So uh, um, a lot of modeling issues uh, are now at the macro scale from the fundamental physical point of view, as well as from the engineering one, uh, to describe properly such kind of, such kind of problems. So let me go now to, um, to some uh, equations. So let me first recall the scales. So in turbulence, we have uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uniform uh, universal uh, scales. 
um, in particular the Komogorov scales that give us an idea of the of the problem we we are facing. So typically, for most of industrial and environmental flows, we we can experience this. We we have a, a, a Kolmogorov land scale which is about 50 micron meters to one millimeter. So it means that if we want to have a fully resolved uh, flow uh, we, for the phase, we need to have a mesh uh, below this scale. So it's uh, very expensive to a totally uh, prohibitive uh, uh, problem. And it's called a direct simulation and it's really, really helpful for some very simple geometrical uh, the geometrical uh, test case to understand the physics and it looks like a real experiment and we have to compare to, to this kind of experiment if we want to address some engineering modeling issue. So typically this uh, motion of the flow, uh, this UF, F is for the reference to the flow, have to be modeled with the mean part and the noise part. And uh, now we have uh, the second entity, uh, the second ingredient of this two phase flow, which is the small part of the particle. So we, at the beginning, uh, suppose that uh, we face some uh, spherical uh, particles only. And we are considering some small particles, means that we are far smaller than the Kolmogorov land scale. So typically, we are looking at uh, particles with a diameter of 30 micron meters. So at that scale, uh, we can consider that the pointwise approximation is okay. So we can just follow the center of mass, which is denoted xp. And we have the velocity of this particle, denoted qp, that we have to, to describe with an equation, a proper equation. So if we have some uh, particle aviers from uh, the fluid itself, so this corresponds to uh, what we call inertial situation. And essentially, we have a particle that experience a drag force. So the, the motion UP of the particle uh, may revert to uh, the velocity of the fluid seen by the particle. And this velocity of the fluid seen by the particle, this US, is not, enfin, it, it could be UF if you are in the DNS world, but if not, you have to address a modeling of this UF part seen by the trajectory XP of this uh, small particle to handle this uh, kind of modeling. The parameter topi, which is the time scale of mean reverting so the particle to this, uh, to this uh, fluid, uh, fluid flow, uh, evolves with the size of the particle. So as soon as we have a lower, bigger particle, particle in the flow, we have to adapt this time scale and this uh, uh, where come from some uh, nice overdent uh, uh, diffusion, diffusion, uh, diffusion problem. So about uh, the flow uh, modeling now, we, we, we have to decide what to know, what to, what to do with this uh, noise part that we have to enter as an ingredient of uh, our model now. So to be to, to stay with a coherent approach between the, the particle, which is uh, by definition the Lagrangian point of view, we need also to adopt the Lagrangian point of view for the flow itself. So this means that uh, we consider a small particle of the flow, which is also uh, driven by uh, a point approximation uh, following this uh, xf equal to uf dt. Uh, uh, situation and this UF now it's a stochastic process that mean reverts uh, to the mean flow itself that to, that uh, experience some Brownian motion here which could be the, which is a three D Brownian motion and some drift term that are given by the the solved uh, Navier-Stokes equation. So whatever uh, this coefficient J I G here this tensor that generalize uh, the Langevin model, uh, this gradient of pressure and the diffusion term here, we are considering that all of these data are coming from the already computed flows. It's a phase flow problem. But I just want to mention here that this, in fact, could be also be considering standalone 
means that all of these uh, coefficients are in fact uh, mean field approximation and leads to interesting making vasophasy problem. But we are just considering in this case that there are already computed by uh, a solver, a field mechanical solver already. Okay, so let's continue and introduce now our model in your, our uh, description of the particle motion. So here we have a position XP that experiences the velocity UP. This velocity UP have a mean reverting drag force here uh, to a stochastic velocity US. And this US mean reverting itself to the mean velocity plus diffusion term, plus drift term coming from some potential. Here's a uh, gradient of the, the, of the pressure term here. And again, we have Mackin of term because we have to ensure that the mean velocity of the particle also reverts to the flow, mean flow velocity. So we have uh, to adapt also some time scale. So it means that the correlation, the correlation time scale experiences by a fluid particle and by a physical particle are not exactly the same. So we have a different uh, a coefficient that enter in the previous coefficient G, G given by the, by the flow that, that uh, manage the change of time scale, time cor correlation time scale of the, between the particle and the fluid flow. And this also leads to some interesting uh, issue, which is uh, the, the limit of the modeling of such uh, approach. When the time scale of the particle is going to zero for a finite uh, topi, so it means that uh, the particle is uh, with a very high inertia and it's like uh, a bullet regime, we can eliminate uh, the, the variable US and directly write uh, as UP a fluid particle velocity here with a topi, which is uh, here fixed. So at the end, we have a, a hierarchy of uh, model. Ah, sorry, I have to mention the historical approach before, which is the case of a very small particle, means uh, that the density of the particle is smaller in that case than the density of the flow. So it's a case of colloids. And it means that the diameter of this particle is about uh, one or two micrometers. And in that case, the drag force has to be complemented with a molecular effect, a Brownian motion directly on the velocity, on the equation of the velocity of the particle. And this second Brownian motion is uh, managed with a WT, which is uh, independent of this previous one. It's two different uh, physical effects here. So BT is assumed to be independent of the Brownian motion B here. W, so it is independent to B. And uh, the Brownian uh, coefficient here is known to depend on the relaxation, uh, relaxation time scale, means that when uh, uh, the relaxation time scale or the diameter of the particle is going to zero, this uh, Brownian effect is increasing. And this is the well-known uh, Langevin to Einstein limits with this uh, diffusion over damping uh, dynamics, where the uh, diffusion coefficient topi uh, k brown by wt uh, comes to uh, the position uh, equation. So now we have this uh, hierarchy of, uh, of, of uh, Lagrangian and Langevin dynamics with three, maybe two, or maybe just one uh, um, see, um, variable at the end according to the fast in elimination of, uh, of variables. Okay, so Let's go into uh, the problem of uh, collision effect now. So we have in the literature uh, a lot of uh, um, approach. Uh, here I uh, just uh, illustrate uh, three of them. Uh, a first one, which is very, very costly. Um, it's uh, the overlap algorithm that just consists to make a very small step in the oh, in the, in the motion of the particle, uh, saying that the delta t is uh, uh, chosen accordingly to the, to, the position, to the velocity of the particle. Um, a second, uh, a second um, approach um, 
it's uh, more relative to the distance, so the real distance of a pair of particles, and also the uh, relative velocity. It's called the, the cylinder condition uh, in a molecular dynamics algorithm. So we can draw a cylinder of collision and uh, uh, count for a collision of particles if the velocities are, uh, are, uh, are crossing, typically. And we have a third family for the, the diffusive regime when, the, diffu when the, the, the dynamics is overdumped. And in that case, uh, we have a, a detection of collision by the, by the computation of some Bessel laws that uh, according to the previous and uh, predicted position of the particle across a time step, uh, detect if there is a, a collision or not with a, with a given probability. So if we go back to a Langevin uh, problem uh, that we face in, uh, in the case of a turbulent flow now, we can uh, consider to examine first the case of per perfectly elastic collision. So it means that at a, a collision event, we have a, an exact exchange of the velocity of each particle. Now, if we consider, uh, we, we take one of the particles, let's say the particle number one, fit at a fixed position. So we all drawing the uh, dynamics according to this, uh, the point of view of the particle one. We, we can uh, uh, observe that we are go back to this uh, silent, uh, cylinder effect uh, algorithm. And also that we can uh, see this uh, reflection event as a bouncing to a wall condition, which is uh, at the uh, perpendicular position of the center of the particle, according to this uh, motion direction. Alors, this suggests to first look at the separation uh, process, so the, the process driving uh, uh, the difference between the position uh, one and two of the particle, and same for the, for the velocity. And in that case, we can uh, uh, precisely describe the, the equation for the reflection, which is a jump term added to the velocity at the position, at the location of the, of the, of the particle where the particles are emitting. And we have just this to draw this exchange of the sign of the velocity between U1 and U2. Putting that uh, in a more, let's say, uh, larger than way, um, for example, with the assumption that uh, B is Lipschitz and that just depends to the relative velocity, same for the diffusion here, we can uh, turn to a more general problem where the uh, specular reflection here is uh, along uh, any domain G regular, uh, smooth enough, globally smooth enough, let's say P3. But if we stay with uh, the, the hyperplan uh, case, we already know that we have some uh, existence, well-fastness, existence, and, and password uniqueness for such a problem. And we have already some, at least in 1D, some. Uh, extension to other spe specular laws given by Bertrand, Jacob, and also uh, some other noise uh, like uh, uh, alpha stable process. Um, continuing in this uh, hyperplan case, we can construct a solution uh, with the help of a free process. Means that if we transform the uh, the drift uh, of the process uh, of the velocity uh, such that it is just, it's, it's going to be a specular uh, drift, p tilde. We change uh, the sign of the last coordinate according to the sign of the position. We reflect the position inside uh, the, the, the dependency on the position of this new drift, b tilde. And we end up with a free process, Y and D, with this new drift B tilde. And it appears that taking the absolute value of the last component of this position process, changing the sign of the, of the last component of the velocity according to the sign of this Y process, draw exactly a solution of your 
of Langeva uh, process with specular condition. So knowing that, we can draw uh, a, a reflection scheme based on this uh, principle. So for the position process, we have uh, just to manage uh, with uh, um, a time step which is assumed uh, to be regular during the interval of time zero to t. We have a prediction step, so we just advance the position according to the previous velocity, which then uh, correct the position by taking the absolute value of the last condition, the latch coordinate. With that, we have all the information to compute the sequence of collision time. So we here, of course, assume that there is only one collision by time steps. It is a, 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 a strong hypothesis. And with this collision time, we can uh, properly define uh, a scheme, a very simple Euler scheme for the velocity. Uh, till this collision time, we, uh, we, we advance with the, with the standard Euler scheme. We then revert the velocity and continue with the standard Euler scheme. So, of course, we have this uh, condition of uh, only one collision by time step but we are able to uh, introduce some uh, and, and analyze some rate of conversion for this scheme. So we have some hypotheses uh, for it. Typically, we need some uh, basic condition of regularity and the drift uh, on um, the boundness of the first derivative for each variable, its position and velocity. But first of all, we have this uh, condition on uh, the fact that the drift itself experiences some specular boundary conditions. So at the boundary, uh, we also um, consider that B is totally transparent to this transformation of the sign of the last condition and the reversion of the velocity. So this sounds like a very restrictive hypothesis, but in fact, in the case we are considering which uh, a B, which is uh, mainly a drag force, according to the velocity, we have a drift term, which is more or less a coefficient that depends only on the position, a velocity minus uh, a, a function V, which is the velocity seen by the, by, the flow, by, by the particle itself. So if we are considering um, the situation of just one particle bouncing to a, to a a wall, then the no permeability condition imposes that the velocity uh, scalar d, the, the normal, um, so it's the nd, the normal to the boundary is zero. And then, so, and then the, this condition is automatically satisfied. If we are considering a collision time events where v is the difference of two mean velocity, then at the, at the, at the um, uh, at the boundary where uh, x1 is equal to x2, this difference is going to zero. So we have also in the set in the range of condition where the, the, the drift satisfies the specular condition we, we need. So with that, and with some technical uh, additional hypothesis on uh, uh, the initial law that uh, allow to not experience immediately a collision uh, when the, the algorithm starts, we are able to prove a first order rate of convergence for, for this scheme. Uh, for test function relatively uh, smooth, so C1 in position and C1 in velocity, but uh, also with compact support, so we are not uh, uh, let's say, considering what's uh, happened uh, at time t, we are considering, we are not taking into account the boundary. So the coefficient here in front of this delta t uh, is um, depending strongly on the Feynman cat representation of this, uh, uh, of this uh, backward Kolmogorov uh, PDE with specular boundary condition. And uh, as uh, it is uh, well known for, uh, let's say, uh, regular situation of SDEs in the whole, uh, whole space, 
uh, or even with reflection condition, uh, it's mainly the regularity we can uh, ensure of this uh, Kolmogorov problem that give us this rate of convergence of delta t. So the boundary condition play a particular role. So we have uh, this uh, F uh, that experience uh, a specular boundary condition on the attainable condition here, the attainable boundary, con uh, boundary phase here. So typically this uh, attainable, <coughs> sorry, this attainable boundary condition is not very classical uh, in the PD, uh, in the PD uh, problem, and we have to manage some reg additional regularity, uh, particularly in that uh, in that case, uh, to uh, <clears throat> to ensure the the convergence. So this is a quick, uh, let's say, remember of what uh, the what is uh, the usual proof uh, in such situations. So imagine that we have a trivial diffusion process with a drift bay and Brownian motion here. Um, imagine that <clears throat> we want to address the approximation of the expectation of phi of the t. We have here the Kolmogorov uh, equation corresponding to this terminal condition. We have here the continuous uh, time version of the Euler scheme uh, with uh, its own, uh, let's say, uh, uh, generator, uh, infinitesimal generator. Applying uh, the ITO formula twice to uh, this, to evaluate the error between these two uh, weak quantities, we know that this leads immediately to a delta t rate of convergence as soon as we are able to bound uh, the second order derivatives of uh, the Kolmogorov problem. So this is very classical, and of course, in our this, uh, con condition of reflection problem, uh, the issue is to, is to grant the regularity of the function f. A word first on the scheme itself. It's very important if we want to reproduce such a strategy that the scheme itself mimic exactly um, the specular condition, because in that case, we can see that the jump terms so in the velocity part totally disappear, and we are free to apply the strategy as just mentioned between these two uh, events, uh, the starting time and the collision time, and then next, the collision time but with the, the velocity revert to the final time of the time step. So all is on the regularity of f. So for this, we, we know already that uh, we can have some uh, at least control in uh, H2, H2 norms of sublime space for the gradient of the velocity. And we have to add some additional regularity for the SN, for both SN uh, in terms of u and x of u of f. This is PDE techniques, uh, quite heavy PDE techniques. And then we can manage the same proof with additional regularity, both in time and space, uh, but it's essentially the same. One point remains very critical, is the fact that because we face some condition, boundary condition that uh, involves attainable boundary, we need to be sure that the function f is continuous up to the boundary and that the derivative is continuous up to the boundary. And this is a particularly uh, difficult problem for PDEs. And this is uh, typically where uh, stochastic analysis is very, very helpful. So typically, it's not uh, at all difficult to grant the continuity up to the boundary to the process itself. So knowing that uh, f the dependence is f is the initial condition of this process x and u. And for the derivatives, we can uh, find some helps with uh, the notion of uh, derivation of flow from Boulot and Hirsch. So from this notion of flow, we know that we can choose the way we can derive the drift term 
uh, x uh, with respect to the British term bit, sorry, with respect to the position or to the velocity. And choosing particular form of these derivatives, we can give a sense and, and manage some bound to this uh, um, um, derivative process, and then show that everything is continuous. The derivatives of f are continuous in terms of x and in terms of u up to the boundary. OK, so let's go to some numerical uh, tests now. So because we are experiencing some weak convergence of order one, it's not it's a, a good test to go directly on Richardson Roman extrapolation. So if we have a true uh, one order uh, convergence result here, we should manage to have observe a, a two order with the Romberg, uh, Richardson Romberg extrapolation here. So it's exactly what uh, we observe here. So of course, we have Monte Carlo simulation uh, to eliminate some uh, uh, noise. We have additional uh, statistics on the error itself to uh, finish to eliminate the noise of the story, the statistical noise. And we, we have a, a set of drift uh, to experiment our process. So we can be just a primitive of Brownian motion, so the drift is zero. It can be a combination of sinusoids from respect to x and u. It could be a Taylor-Lambert process, and in all the cases, we can see that we experience a very close to two uh, rate of convergence results. In fact, many of these uh, um, um, power here depend on the initial condition con uh, that we will see uh, in a moment from uh, the empirical strong convergence result. So here quickly, uh, for the problem we, we consider, there are, there's no convergence uh, results available. That we know is some, um, let's say, convergence result for the equivalent uh, uh, deterministic problem with external force. This is a nice result from Pauli and Schassmann. We know also that some penalization scheme proposed by Slominski are converging, but that's all. So nevertheless, in that case, even with B equals zero or in the in B, uh, the, the sinus uh, drift term, we can observe some uh, uh, rate of convergence result uh, for the position process and for the velocity process that are strongly dependent on what is going on with the initial condition. So if we, sorry, if we go closer to the boundary with a, a velocity that is uh, lesser than uh, the previous one, we, we cannot ameliorate uh, the, the rate of convergence. Um, also, the situation is even uh, worse with the um, Orsteinenberg process. Here, in that case, we mean revert the velocity u to a very strong negative velocity, so the the collision is uh, is inevitable, and you can see that we have some decay, some uh, spurious convergence effects, probably due to the um, hypothesis of just one collision by time step, which is not even true uh, in that situation. So going back to some extreme uh, situation like this, we can uh, ask if uh, some dumping approximation uh, is uh, also allowed with for the boundary condition. So I go back now to this uh, problem of uh, uh, fast variable elimination and the convergence of the uh, overdamped uh, diffusion uh, in terms of discretization of time. So this is a very classical problem already uh, uh, with already some known results from Nelson, from Pavlotis for the um, strong convergence. But what about weak convergence? And what about for the bouncing process as well? So here, just quickly, uh, some effects. <coughs> Uh, due to the fact that uh, we are uh, seeking some non-asymptotic results, we are free to uh, let 
The diffusion problem here depends fully of the coefficient beta, which is the invert of the relaxation time here. And let this, uh, this uh, beta dependency in the diffusion problem. It's typically what's happened in, uh, in the simulation uh, of the overdamping particle flows. So we can uh, observe first that we have the same, let's say, uh, uh, convergence, improvement of the convergence effect between strong norm and weak norms. It means that uh, if we look uh, carefully, the, 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 the rate of convergence results in strong norm, here the LP norm, we can observe that, of course, we have strong conversion as soon as uh, sigma is uh, decreeing in, is behaving in beta alpha with alpha smaller than three alpha, but also that we have a strong convergence of order one only if uh, sigma is behaving like the one over square root of beta. For, weak, uh, for the weak norm, so here we have some hypothesis. We, we go back to the very, uh, launch of, uh, very simple launch of a system to, to handle this. Um, in that case, we can see that we have the same rate of convergence. For the uh, weak convergence, we have a one of a beta term here. But contrary to the strong convergence, we can uh, uh, let the, the, the coefficient sigma behave like one of a beta. So uh, with that, this in mind, so we, um, we can go now to uh, the fully, uh, let's say, uh, drift uh, condition, uh, uh, slow fast elimination case, where we can directly compare uh, the marginal, uh, the, uh, marginal density of the position velocity process to the Brownian one and uh, computes a one of uh, beta rate of convergence results. And this is also true, or maybe I can skip that, this is uh, just saying that we can uh, um, manage this uh, bound with some mild equation. And then, sorry, then we can also obtain the same results when we apply the reflect uh, the specular reflection to the process. And this now allows to compare what's going on when in a numerical simulation, we introduce a switch between the models um, in terms of uh, Langevin regime, regime against the Brownian ones. So in uh, the, the right uh, picture, I show the uh, one of a beta convergence result when we fix a very small time step for the simulation. Here we have condition, uh, quite general condition on the drift term. And at the contrary here, we, we, we simulate two process, the Brownian diffusion ones and the Langevin one for a very small, a very strong, a very small time scale, but very strong, coefficient beta and observe that very quickly we have a gain of convergence when we activate the Brownian ones. And of course, as soon as delta t becomes smaller and smaller, we need to switch back to the Langevin model. Okay, so now <coughs> let's quickly draw the situation uh, when we are considering some an interacting particle system. In fact, we can, uh, quite uh, generalize the uh, separation problem to, uh, to a fully Langevin one. The, the strong condition is the regularity of the, of the domain D that we have to consider. So in the case of N bigger than two, we face uh, the, the problem that this boundary is not at all globally, uh, globally regular. So uh, for typically for the cooling art, colliding art fair in the case of free uh, paths or the, the, the Boltzmann situation typically, we know that this is not a problem to well define the, the, the system of colliding particles, but in the case of diffusion processes, 
uh, this question is not, uh, I have no answer yet. So we have some limiting system. We can introduce some uh, flocking uh, re repulsive drift. We can introduce some aggregation case, so non-elastic diffusion that also help to modify this problem anyway. So maybe I have quickly maybe two, three minutes to talk about my last topic. So I yes, perhaps five minutes. Five minutes, say. but I think it's uh, will be okay. So um, now I would like to quickly draw uh, some empirical study of what is going on with non-spherical particles. So the problem now is to capture the rotational dynamics. All what I said concerns the transitional dynamics. But what about the fact that in the flow, the particle is, is rotating? And this is particularly uh, of, uh, of uh, um, main importance for uh, uh, if we want to consider next flexible particle. But let's start with some uh, ellipsoids that are described uh, here with some aspect ratio. So uh, with this family of spheroids, we can draw a coefficient gamma that in fact evolve between one and minus one. So the case of gamma equals zero just correspond to uh, the sphere. The case uh, gamma equal to one correspond to the limit of this uh, spheroid stretched in the vertical direction to a road. And here, when gamma equal minus one, we have the limit of uh, what is a just flat disk in the flow. So, uh, when the flow dynamics is totally resolved, the dynamics of the orientation of this uh, spheroid is totally uh, described by the Jeffrey equation here. Um, but uh, we have to uh, introduce in this modeling the gradient of the velocity uh, also. So uh, the dynamic and the, the fact that P the orientation is face uh, a decomposition of this gradient in part, in anti-symmetric part, plus a stretching part, a symmetric part, um, amplified by this gamma, is already uh, well known and applied in DNS simulation. So typically, here is a, a DNS simulation. It's a, it's a channel flow. So you imagine that you have infinite, two infinite uh, horizontal plates, and in between, you, you have a, a turbulent flow with, boundary, with periodic boundary condition, obviously. And in this flow, that uh, experience so strong vorticity near the boundary at the bottom and at the top and, uh, and lower vorticity at the middle, you introduce some, uh, some roads here, typically. And we want to uh, address some modeling now of this phenomena that uh, preferentially uh, align this road at the boundary according to the flow, at the gradient of the flow, more precisely. So this can be addressed with some uh, uh, introduce on of noise not only on the on the velocity itself but on the gradient of the velocity itself. So with the help the help sorry of a Brownian three by three matrices of uh, independent Brownian motion, we construct um, a model a Gaussian model for this uh, uh, now uh, random uh, random uh, gradient flow that is decomposed in the mean gradient approach plus some uh, um, for, for order tensors uh, coming from some uh, hypothesis here. It's uh, uh, isotropic uh, uh, fluctuation hypothesis, which is in use, uh, scored problem. Um, sorry, um, Stratonovich, uh, Stratonovich uh, SDE's problem. So, we have to consider now um, an SDE for the orientation. So I will uh, uh, remember that we call that this orient orientation have to be of norm one at any time of the simulation. So we have uh, now some stochastic terms which are introducing at according to Z, which is a Brownian matrix that decompose the original three by three a Brownian matrix in this anti-symmetric anti rotational part and symmetric part, which is a Brownian stretching. 
I will just now end with some a part, a small parts, small pieces of this uh, uh, modeling issue and numerical issue because we, it's a model that we propose, and of course we need to validate it against DNS. So we need immediately to simulate it. And just to show you the flavor of the difficulty we face, here is uh, some tentatives of the simulation of just the Brownian rotation part. So this is with this Stratonovich formula formulation, a representation of the Brownian motion on the 3D sphere. So applying the Ito terms here and applying the Euler scheme eventually with some renormalization, we can see that the Euler scheme does not converge at all, whatever the time step, whatever the, the strongness of the diffusion here. This is a well-known uh, issue, and that's, uh, um, uh, um, let's say, uh, it's, in, it's um, have a, a large community of application, but mainly in, in this intrinsic uh, formulation. So a solution for that is to go to rotational uh, dynamics directly, introduce some uh, new uh, formulation of this Brownian motion with quaternion uh, uh, algebra. So the fact to add an additional variable to the system uh, instead of the three dimension of the orientation here allow to properly uh, manage the orientation Brownian orientation simulation here. So with uh, now um, well first order conversions for the weak error and uh, square root order conversions for the strong error. And with that, we can go back to our uh, modeling issue and check that uh, this uh, stochastic Jeffrey dynamics uh, quite coincide with the DNS fully resolved uh, Jeffrey dynamics. So in this last lecture, and this is my last, last slide, uh, uh, Emmanuel, I just want to show you that uh, in the middle of the channel, which is uh, the, the right of this uh, picture, here is a, a component P2 and here is a component P1 and the more precise is variance of component P1 and P2. So here is the middle of the channel where everything is corresponding to the uniform law on the sphere. So um, the different aspect ratio of our particle are, are samples from the uh, perfectly broad in uh, dark uh, red to uh, the perfectly disk in dark blue here. So we have a good aggregation of, the, of this alignment trend effects in the model, but we have to cut this, uh, this uh, uh, the stochastic model below, uh, before to, to reach the boundary, uh, because uh, the model is no more, uh, let's say, uh, uh, have a ba validity region which is uh, which is not uh, um, uh, which is, we have some limits. And again, we need to introduce some boundary condition for the position of the particle and uh, for the orientation itself. Okay, that's my last slide. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like to mention quickly that this is, of course, a collaborative, collaborative work with uh, um, uh, some uh, results that are uh, published, some in preprint, some in redaction with, uh, for the Langevin, uh, as the problem with specular reflection, Jean-François Javier and Randou Maftey, for the orientation dynamics of non-spherical particles, Jérémy Beck, Lorenzo Campana, Christophe Henry, Jean-Pierre Minier, and Martin Ferrand. So the, here is some references, and now it's time to put some roads in turbulent flow, and I will be very happy to answer your question. Thank you.